So I'm currently working on my in-depth review of the OnePlus 8 Pro. And one aspect that perhaps makes my review a little unique is the fact that the device that I'm using has an unlocked bootloader and is rooted using Magisk. Now, one of the first things I always do whenever I receive a new phone, regardless of whether it's even possible to root the thing or not, is unlock the bootloader. The reason being, you cannot root your phone with a locked bootloader and unlocking the bootloader completely wipes the data on your phone. And so even if a just recently released phone is not yet able to be rooted, then I will still unlock the bootloader the very first time that I set up the device. That way, later on down the road, if I end up deciding to root my phone, I don't lose all of my data in the process. Now, with all of that said, I thought that some of you might be interested to learn from me how to go about unlocking and rooting your OnePlus 8 Pro device. And I'll even showcase some of my favorite modules to install. A quick disclaimer, these are just instructions on how to unlock your bootloader and root your phone. In no way am I saying that you should do this to your device and you should definitely look into the risks and back up your phone if you were thinking about doing this to your phone. But again, with that said, let's get into it. Now, as you can see, I've got my computer here. I'll show it on screen as we go so that you can follow along. But the first thing that we need to do is download some files that enables our device to interact with our computer via command line prompt. So I've left a link to an XDA article below to where you can download these files. There are different versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So download your flavor of choice, extract the zip file. And within that, you should see a folder called platform tools. Drag and drop this to your desktop. And now we need to jump over to our phone. So the first thing we need to do is to enable developer options in our settings menu. So to do this, navigate down to the about phone menu and then tap where it says build number seven times until your passcode shows up, input that as necessary, then head back to the main settings menu and then come into the system page. And now down towards the bottom here, you'll see developer options. Tap on that. And then the first thing we need to do is enable OEM unlocking. If we don't do this, we won't be able to unlock our bootloaders. Then come down to the debugging section and enable USB debugging. This allows the phone to communicate with your PC using those files we downloaded earlier. Now we need to plug our device into our computer and you'll most likely then see an authorization pop up to enable USB debugging, which of course you want to enable. Okay, now we want to head back to our computer and you can see obviously I'm using a Mac here, but the process is very similar even if you're using a PC. But if you're feeling a little bit apprehensive, then I've left another link down below that explains the process exactly when using a PC. But we basically want to open the platform tools folder using either the command prompt if you're using PC or the terminal if you're on a Mac. To do this on a Mac, I'm just gonna launch the terminal application, then type CD desktop, enter, and then CD platform dash tools, and then enter. And this directs the terminal to that platform dash tools folder sitting on my desktop. From there, type in dot slash ADB space devices, and then hit enter. And you should see a random number here that indicates that your device is correctly set up. If this shows as blank, it might be because you haven't yet enabled USB debugging or you haven't yet authorized it on your device or perhaps the cable is faulty. But once we've verified that our device is plugged in, we're then gonna type in dot slash ADB space reboot space bootloader and then enter. And this will turn off your phone and launch it into fast boot mode. Once you get a menu that looks like mine on screen now, you can then verify that all is well again by typing in fast boot space devices, then enter. And again, you should get another number that verifies we're all set. And so once that is confirmed, we can then type in fast boot space OEM space unlock, and then hit enter. Once you do so, you should see a confirmation message on your phone, and you can then use your volume keys to select the unlock the bootloader option, then hit the power key to confirm. The bootloader will then unlock and you should then be rebooted back into fastboot mode. And from here, we can type into our command prompt, fastboot, reboot, then enter, and your device will boot back up. Now, again, your phone will be wiped at this point in time and you'll have to go through the setup process again. And so generally speaking, this is why I tend to rush that initial setup of my phone. I don't worry about transferring across any applications or setting up fingerprints and so on and so forth because I know I'm about to do it all again anyway. But you will have to go and enable developer settings and USB debugging again on your phone as those settings were reset in the bootloader unlocking phase. So once you've done that, we're ready to move back to our computers to download some additional files. 
So I'll leave a link to another XDA article down below. And this is where you need to download a patched boot image. And this is actually the key ingredient in rooting your phone. So on this XDA post, we're gonna scroll down to where it says download, and we're gonna click on that top link there. This will open up another site with a whole heap of files, and we wanna make sure we download the correct boot image for not only our region specific device, but also for the software patch that we are currently updated to. So if we look over on my 8 Pro, I'm gonna head into the about page again, and you can see here it says the build number is 10.5.6.in11ba. And then back on this website here, it actually took me a few tries to figure out which file here was for my device. And I only realized my phone was the Europe version because I noticed in some of these earlier Europe files, you can see that it actually has that BA reference in the file name as well, which is not referenced in any other file. So initially I thought I must have the global version, but then I thought, oh, maybe I have the Indian version because of that IN in the build number on my phone. And if you do load in the wrong boot image, then it won't brick your phone, but some features won't work. For example, I could not turn on Wi-Fi no matter how hard I tried. It just kept automatically turning itself off. And so if you run into issues yourself after patching the boot image file, then it's most likely just a case of simply patching the wrong file. So once you've identified which version your phone is, you then wanna find the corresponding file on this website here, and you wanna ensure that you get the Magisk patched version as this is the one that will actually root your phone. Mine is the 10.5.6 Europe Magisk underscore patched dot image file. So I'm gonna download that. The stock underscore boot files are there just in case anything goes wrong, you can use them to revert back to stock. So once it's downloaded, you then wanna move that file into the platform tools folder on your desktop. And then we wanna go back to our terminal and type in dot slash ADB space reboot space bootloader then enter to launch our phone into fast boot mode again. Once our phone is in fast boot mode, I like to triple check things are all set to go by typing in fast boot space devices, then enter. And then if that number shows up, we then wanna type in the following prompt, fast boot space flash space boot, followed by another space. And then we wanna drag and drop that patched boot image file we just downloaded onto our command prompt application to indicate that that's the boot image file we wanna flash. Once you've done that, then click enter. From here on your phone, nothing will appear as though it's changed, but you can then use your phone to download the Magisk Manager file, which I will link to down in the description below. Install the APK once it's downloaded and then launch the app and then click on install, then direct install, and wait till that process is complete and then you can reboot your device. And just like that, your phone is now rooted and you can start to explore the download section in the Magisk Manager application to find a heap of really cool modules or you can even find a heap of third-party ones online as well. And just for reference, some of my favorites for the OnePlus 8 Pro include Quick Switch, which allows me to set up and use LaunchAir version two as the default home screen launcher, immersive gestural navigation bar, which removes that awful background behind the navigation bar. You can also install Riru Core and Riru Ed Exposed to run an application called AOD Mod, which enables a pretty nifty looking always on display feature. And that's all I tend to use at this point in time. But as I said, there are so many cool modules available on the World Wide Web that you might stumble upon. And once you've done some exploring and some experimenting, definitely let me know your favorite modules down in the comments below. Aside from that, if you found this video helpful, then consider hitting subscribe, that would be amazing. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.